Architects typically spend hours trying to create floor plans. What if I told you an AI tool could help you create 10 floor plan iterations in minutes and then allows you to create mathematically precise renderings from those floor plans? Well, I just found an AI tool that does just that. It turns your text prompts into floor plans. So in this video, let me show you the entire workflow from creating floor plans all the way to the final output. Is AI really the solution to all of our problems? Well, I wouldn't say so, but great floor plans using AI, I've started using Snaps. So let's get started. Within Snaps, all you have to do is type in a text prompt and the AI will generate floor plans based on your needs. So for the first prompt that we're gonna use, I'm just gonna type in a two bedroom apartment. And before you press anything, you wanna make sure that the toggle at the bottom of the prompt is turned on to floor plans. Um, the frame is kind of background of what we're gonna use and then to get the sizing of the floor plan, we're gonna go up to the top toolbar, click on rectangle or use the shortcut R and you're gonna drag the rectangle to the width and the height of the floor plan that you approximately want. So you're starting to see this is roughly 10 meters by seven meters. I'll go ahead and click it and make sure that the rectangle is selected. So that is the outline. If nothing's selected, it's not gonna be as precise to the sizing that you want. And so you can see that the rectangle is selected by having it show up on the bottom of the toolbar. I'm gonna press enter and let's see the, wow, okay. I didn't even have a chance to say what I was gonna say. This was all real time and it already generated the floor plan. Sorry for the abruptness, that was just incredibly quick. So we generated a two bedroom apartment, roughly 10 meter by seven meters. So there's the bedroom, this is the bathroom. As you can see, there are some, this window isn't exactly where we want it. We can go ahead and move it and it'll be hosted into the wall. So we have a pretty large living room and then the door to enter the space. We have another smaller bathroom here, which seems a little too small as well as the the wall is going into the window. So all you have to do within snaps, it's super easy. You can start to drag and align the different elements together, moving around the doors. You can change the swing and then which way it swings in or out, as well as you can start to adjust between windows and doors. So all the, the components, they come in wall and then you have openings and then you have rooms. So it's a very simple, basic way to start to create floor plans, but within snaps it's super fast and super easy so i think those are the main benefits um but as you see within several seconds like three seconds it generated one iteration of a floor plan so let's go ahead and generate a couple other other iterations just to kind of get some variation of what we want so i'm going to go generate a quick frame right here do one more frame and it'll generate a couple more floor plans let's do like a long and skinny here trying out some different layouts okay press enter this one's taking a little bit longer, but still quick. Let's do one more two bedroom apartment. And the thing is you don't have to get super detailed with the prompts. I'm just keeping it fairly basic. I'm trying to convey the expectations of what I want created. So we got some taller and skinnier bedrooms with a long corridor in between in this plan. Let's put these walls into place and then get everything situated. There we go. And so this will open up into the living room and then a bathroom. So. Within like 30 seconds, you've created three floor plans just showing how quickly it can be done. And if you wanna master AI before it masters you, click the link in the description for an easy AI cheat sheet in architecture that includes AI tools that I use as well as prompt templates that you can get started today with. There is something to be said about sometimes there is a balance between quantity and quality, but I'd argue the more you kind of test things out, the quality will get better as well as through the different options, you'll see the things that work and the things that don't. So I'm starting to like how this floor plan is looking. The bedrooms are kind of broken off onto one side of the apartment and you have the bathroom kind of tucked away and then the kitchen in its own space. Now, I don't think the kitchen needs to be completely walled off. Let's quickly generate a couple more floor plans before we move on to the next step. And then for this last one, let's do more of a custom shape. So. I'll go to the polyline and then begin to draw. Let's go with like an L-shape apartment. Thankfully, when you're creating the polyline, it allows the, the points to snap so you can get a nice and easy floor plan. For this one, I think we can go for a three bedroom. It's a little bit bigger. I mean, these are coming in at record time. Now, obviously there are some errors that do occur because of the speed, but I think you know that is part of the process as this is a new tool. Um, things are constantly being improved and developed. I've already seen progress since I've been using snaps and 
I know there will continue to be even more progress as things go along. For the early stages that it's at, I think it's doing it's doing quite a magnificent job of creating floor plans from text prompts. And then finally, we're due that L-shaped apartment. So let's go for more of a three bedroom. So I can only give us one bedroom. I think the funky layout of the floor plan threw it off. Out of all these floor plans, now we can start to select which one we want to develop even further. Funny enough, the first plan that we created kind of turned out to be the one I wanted to use the most. And so now that we have the rough floor plan, we don't even have to put any furniture in to start rendering and visualizing the space. Creating precise interior renderings has never been easier and you don't even have to lay your finger in a 3D modeling software. Now, how you can do that is within Snaps, once you've created a floor plan, you go up to the top toolbar, you'll click on camera, and you just drag and place the camera angle that you want. And then once you've selected the camera, we'll go down to the text prompt and type in what we want in the scene. So we're gonna have a bedroom for an apartment with a bed, nightstand, windows, looking out to New York City and a dresser. But I think one key element that we're missing is a style. So let's go for a modern bedroom style. Click enter. And just as quickly as we were able to create floor plans, we'll also be able to create renders. Now how it works is the renderings will be nodes off of the floor plan. So you can start to create multiple rendered iterations. So that's one floor plan. Make sure when you click the camera that you turn off the floor plan toggle and then the camera button will show up. So this is the first rendering that we've created. Already excellent in terms of describing what we want within the scene and then the views out each window. And as you can see from the perspective, you have a window on the left and the window on the right. So this time, same elements and same furniture within the space, but I'm rolling with a little bit different style and also a different background to the exterior. So as you can see, we've quickly generated three different options of this bedroom space within Snaps. So it's kept the windows and the placement that we want. It's also roughly had the bed and the furniture that we've asked for in the prompts. But the next step is building off of these images that we've created. We have the space created, but now we want to fine tune it even more. So for this middle iteration that I created, it was first a mid-century modern style, but I then typed in an additional prompt to make it more of a classical style. And so how this is different than what we initially did is when we first did the rendering, it based it off of the room and the scene that we had created in the floor plan. But then when you have the rendering selected and then add an additional prompt, it just changes the characteristics from that previous image. So as you can see, compared to some of the other images, the bed and the nightstands and the dresser are all in the same place. But what changed is the characteristics of the style that we prompted. So for instance, this can be extremely helpful in this modern image. We'll select the image and then let's go for changing the wall type. So I'm gonna change the walls to white, but then at the ceiling, add a wood slat ceiling with a fan. So there we go, we got the wood slat ceiling, the ceiling fan, and then the walls change colors. And what's nice is everything else in the image that we did not prompt to change remain the way it was. We still have the views out to the skyline and we still have the furniture in the right place. But let's take it a step further and actually bring in some furniture from outside and copy it in to snaps. So I brought in this light from Google and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place it roughly where I want it. And then in the prompt, I'll direct the AI to replace the ceiling fan with this lighting fixture. Within a couple seconds, not only does it crop out the lighting fixture, but it removes the ceiling fan and brings it into the space. This is gonna be super helpful as you start to develop your renderings and start to bring them to life with actual products. So what we started out with is just a basic floor plan. And since then we've evolved by creating renderings and then tailoring those renderings to the style and the elements that we want. But there's also another way that you can start to tailor the composition of these renderings from the floor plans. So we just started out with a blank bedroom, but there's actually a better way to get the placement of the furniture exactly how you want. And that is by going into the Snaps block library. So I can actually go in, click on the bedroom block, 
and then bring it in and place it where I want. So I don't actually want it on the same wall. I'll move it over here. I'll move this window to this side and then let's go ahead and find like a little side chair, bring that in. You can scale everything accordingly. Let's go for this. Okay, now we have some furniture placed. It'll make it a lot easier for the AI to understand where we want everything located. I did a Baroque style for this rendering. Very extravagant. The bed's in the right location, the chair, a little mislocated, but something that we can work with. Um, but another thing that you can do, for instance, I feel like this industrial rendering is feeling a little dead and lifeless. Um, obviously that's what the style does, but what you can do is add some elements like a painting by drawing in a rectangle right here, let's say. And so then in the prompt, what we'll do is so then I'll type in to add like a painting or an artwork in that selected area. And so this is definitely brutalist artwork. It replaced one of the windows, not exactly where we identified it, but I think we're in the right direction of what we were wanting. So there are several ways that you can transform your floor plan and develop it using AI from text prompts and then progress all the way to realistic, mathematically precise renderings of those individual spaces. But in under 10 minutes, we were able to create all these renderings and develop all these floor plans within snaps. Now, there's still a lot of progress to be made overall in AI, but also within snaps. It's just in the beginning stages of the software, but there are already so many promising things that I see about snaps that I've been using. For instance, their floor plan generation and then their mathematically precise renderings that you've seen here. So stay tuned for more content about AI and architecture. Thank you guys for watching and welcome to the grind.